Good morning. Last week in our devotionals, we talked about a choice we have in life. Uh, which way? We also took a journey down the path that leads to destruction to show you what you would find along the way if you chose the wrong path. And today, I will talk about the right road or the path we should follow in our life. There are a few names for this path that we find in the Bible. First of all, it is called the path of righteousness. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous, Proverbs 2.20. And this verse shows me that on this path, there are good men, or should I say women as well, going down the trail with you. These would be our brothers and sisters in Christ. They are with us on this journey that leads to life. Um, another verse, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. A very famous verse found in Psalm 23, verse 3. So also on this path, you will find that our good shepherd will lead us. He will help us to know where to go. Another name for the right road we find in the Bible is the path of life. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16, verse 11. God is with you on this path. Notice the words, in thy presence, at thy right hand. So on the path of life, not only will Jesus lead you as the good shepherd, like we saw in Psalm 23, but he will also walk beside you as your greatest friend. On the path of life, you will have the pleasure of being in your Savior's presence. Which leads me to the next name that the Bible gives us for this path that we should take. It is also known as thy path. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Psalm 25, 4. Here I notice that walking along the path that leads to life can be a test. We will do some learning on the way according to this verse. If you notice the words, teach me thy paths. Well, whenever someone is teaching, we know that there's going to be a test somewhere along the way, right? While traveling this road, there will be tests, trials, mountains, if you will, that we have to learn to climb. And on this trail, we always will have someone there to help us though. Hold up my goings and thy paths that my footsteps slip not. Psalm 17 verse 5. We need to ask the Lord for his help while traveling this path because according to this verse it is possible for us to slip, to mess up, maybe fall down. Sometimes while traveling this path we will see a little trail leading to the right or to the left straying off of the main path. These are what we could call rabbit trails. This is where someone got off the main trail and wandered away from the Lord. You see these a lot of the times partway up a mountain or down in a valley. There's a path that leads away. That's where someone got off the main trail. They wandered. Maybe they quit reading their Bible or praying or maybe they've stopped going to church because they were having a tough time. They've left the right road. Last week I read the verse, Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Proverbs 4.26 well, once we decide to get on the right road, the path that leads to life, then we also need to make sure we heed the next verse and don't follow those rabbit trails. The next verse says, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil, Proverbs 4.27. Be careful not to get sidetracked while traveling. If you feel you're straying from the way God wants you to go in life, listen for that still small voice. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand or when ye turn to the left. Jeremiah 30, verse 21. Sometimes our feet start to stray, and then we'll hear that voice inside of us or behind us saying, Don't go that way. Don't turn there. Stay here on this main path, because if you stay on the right trail that I have for you, there are some great things you'll find along the way. God's abundant blessings will be all along this path that leads to life. Listen to this verse. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. 
The valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Psalm 65, verses 11 through 13. Notice that phrase at the beginning that I read, thy paths drop fatness. What does that mean? Well, that phrase symbolizes an abundance of God's blessings. And where does it mention that you'll find those abundant blessings? Along God's paths. Now I want you to notice also the areas that were mentioned in these verses where you will find his blessings. First of all, it mentioned in the wilderness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness. When I think of the wilderness, I think of loneliness. There's not a lot of people out in the wilderness and you may feel alone along the path that runs through the wilderness, but you will find something there. You will find God's blessings. And when you are feeling lonely, Remember that you have a friend and he will never leave you nor forsake you. The second place that these verses mention where you'll find God's blessings are the little hills. The little hills rejoice on every side. When I think of the little hills, I think of small challenges we face in life. Nothing too big like being imprisoned or, or spiritual persecution like they face in some countries, but small things. I like maybe school, not being able to open for your kids, or a sickness, a job loss, things just not going according to your plan this year. Those are little hills. But notice the words, the little hills rejoice. Even when we go through some small trials, God's blessings along the way can still cause us to rejoice. Maybe it's by someone providing you with a meal or a prayer being answered maybe an unexpected gift from a friend or a text that came at just the right moment you needed to hear it for some encouragement. Those are blessings from God. Those blessings bring rejoicing even while climbing the little hills. The third place where we find God's blessings along this trail is in the pastures. The pastures are clothed with flocks. To me, the pastures symbolize the good times along the trail. This path that leads to life is not going to be all hard times. There will be those really great times we enjoy while pilgrims on this earth on our journey to heaven. Those good times are a blessing from God. My family and I, I enjoyed a good time yesterday. We decided that since the kids were about to start school, we would take one final day and just go drive and see some sights and be together. So we went to the Redwoods in Santa Cruz. We stopped and we had some pizza together. We enjoyed a, a sunset along Highway 1 coastline while the kids played in the water. And uh, we drove home across the Golden Gate. It was such a beautiful night. And, you know, yesterday that time with my family was a blessing from God. It was a pasture along the trail that leads to life and a day where we could just kind of leave our troubles behind and enjoy just being together for a day. And we've had many good times as a family, but sometimes... It's hard when we're in a valley or we're climbing a mountain to remember the easier days of walking in a pasture surrounded by beautiful fragrant flowers, luscious green grass to cushion our steps. But that's why we should keep a book of remembrance. And I talked about that in a previous devotional that it'll help us to remember when things get a little tougher, how good God has been to us in the past, if we can just look back and remember them. And that will give us faith to look to our future and know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And the last place these verses mention that we will find God's blessings are in the valleys. The valleys also are covered over with corn. The valleys, like the wilderness, are the places we'd rather not be on our journey. I'd much rather be on the mountaintop or in a beautiful pasture, enjoying a good day while on my life's journey. But a very wise, wonderful lady that I take to the chiropractor taught me a wonderful lesson in just a very few words a couple weeks ago, or maybe a month or so ago. We were talking about the valleys in our life, and I mentioned something along, something along the line of that I just didn't like having to go through the valleys. And she said, yes, but it's in the valley that things grow. Thanks, Jeannie, for helping me to remember that if I want to grow in my Christian life, and I do, I'm going to have to go through some valleys because that is where I will grow. I'm going to have to climb some mountains, but all along the way, this way that leads to life in the wilderness of loneliness, 
on the little hills of trials we face, in the pastures walking in the beauty of those good days, and down in the valleys of growth, my Savior walks with me, and he leaves blessings all along that path that leads to life for me to find along the way. This is the right road. In our next devotional, we will learn one more lesson about what we will find on the path that leads to life, the right road.